What are the statistics? You, you're going to scare me, aren't you? They're, ble they're bleak. Oh, no! So the World Health Organization has just... Oh my god, you're like the, well, the no. Grim Reaper in I, here. I, 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 <laughs> great. What is the best sex position to reproduce? I'm really sorry you don't have that on that. Okay, get up. You're looking at your phone. I'm ready though. What are you looking at? Instagram? Um, so my phone is like doing these weird things where on my like homepage, yeah. an old photo comes up. I'm not a fan of it. Why? What photo just pops honestly, up? Because honestly, your arsehole sometimes comes up. What? Not that he sends you face of his ass, but there's like this rash on it anyway, TMI. <laughs> what do you mean there's a rash on it? And like before I've had to use, instead of torching, oh no, you've asked me to take a photo of it to show you. What do you mean I've asked you to take a photo of my ass? You have like this awful thing inside your asshole. <laughs> no, I don't. Say so, we can't just you can't just say that and stop there, especially at the beginning of the episode. What do you mean I have something awful in my arsehole? Well, there's two awful things, but we won't go into one. But you have a rash that's been there for so many years and it grows and then it shrinks and then it grows. I think it's in Patigo, which is absolutely <laughs> foul, which is literally like an infection of bacteria. Where is it? Inside your bum cheeks. What like is, not in your what arsehole, is the other like, thing in my arsehole that's I'm not, not going. going into that because everyone's heard the... it. You've clearly liked to talk about it. God I, knows I don't why know what you're you talking about. Think it's something about. to hold as a token of coolness because <laughs> it's anything but. What else are you talk? What it's part of your? It's like a gold badge you like to walk around. I have piles. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've had you even laugh at that. Just... I didn't realize you were talking about that. So, so, what other thing is in your past? So <laughs> Because <laughs> I am, I'm worried about this rash that's in my bum, and I got on all fours, and she <laughs> spread open my bum to take a photo of it, and then she said, "God, your past is like a grape." <laughs> you said, "You said it had grown." <laughs> It's not a hard grave, it's like a shriveled up grave. It's absolutely vile. It's so vile, and I'm really sorry, but I just like. Like, no, not quite. More like a raisin. It's it's like a big sultana. That's exactly what it's like. It's not quite as wrinkly as a raisin. It's like got a bit of water pumped into it. So it's like a sultana. That size as well. It's not the size of a raisin. No, it's bigger. It's a sultana. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, it's or not. Or it's like, you know, the rank purple grape at the end of the packet that like has been squashed a bit. That's what it's like. A small one. It's not, honey. It is, and it's vile. And I just constantly think, like, fair play to you having sex with people before me and never being self-conscious of that. Well, who's going to see it? Well, I don't know. You might be, like, flipping around all over Why the Why would I be flipping around and anyone I don't know. Well, you seem to be front roll, roly polies <laughs> on my bed, and I get to see it all the time. Anyway. Is it really? Is it re okay, well, I need to get No, that I don't think we want well, to... to. My dad listens to this podcast. You brought it up. I didn't. I said your I can't bum... get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. Yeah, you can. Well, how can I get rid of it? I'm sure that there's surgery for that. There's, I'm not going to go and get... A, a, there's Pals cream. I'm not going to get a, a, a grape surgically removed from my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't really know how Pals happens, but it's hideous. Oh my God. You know my Do dog you know died gonna... of Pals. My dog died because he had Pals. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I think around, the, okay, I had Dobermans, Charlie Brown. It died because it had piles. Rest in peace. Seriously, you stop laughing at him. Okay, I I kept seeing like this thing spurting out of his bum. I was like, mom, something's wrong with Charlie. And they said he had piles. I think that actually so, they uh, misdiagnosed him and he had bowel cancer, poor guy. Oh my God. No, it's really so sad we put him down. <laughs> you can't be misdiagnosed between piles of, and well, they d we, they, Someone told me it was piles because that's how I first learned about piles. I saw something on Instagram, TikTok, which is, you had a hamster, right? Mm -hmm. Did your hamster ever just become cold and die? They both went missing. I don't know what happened to either of they them. They both went missing? Chip and Biscuit, they just disappeared one day. What do you mean they disappeared? So, they one day they weren't in the cage. And I, I, just, I swear to God, both <laughs> mum and dad. What the hell did you do with Chip and Biscuit? <laughs> Chip Biscuit was my first one. So cute. He was like grey. He was like that color. Yeah. He was really fat, and he went missing. 
I think we had him in the roly poly the ball and like he just went around the house and one and the, the ball was open and we were like no and my sister was com- like he was a flatmate what you can <laughs> just put him in the ball <laughs> you can't just put him in the ball just let him room the house. no they do they go it's, it's, so be, it's, it's not like a human yeah but it's it's contained it's obviously not because Chip disappeared no that was basically <laughs> But my sister kept telling me that she thought that he had mated, like she couldn't get over this OCD obsession that he had mated with rats and he was gonna, we were gonna have, huge, Chip was gonna, Biscuit was gonna come back. I think Biscuit came back and he, she was really fat. I don't know if it was for a girl, but George was convinced it had mated with a rat in our house and it was pregnant with rat babies. Why are you letting it run around the house? It's like it's a child. It was having fun. Well, so if you can't let a hamster or a guinea pig what, or whatever. What, you would lock it up? Yes. Cruelty boy. No, you- <laughs> cruelty but you can't just let it run anyway, chip. it doesn't call you don't go chip biscuit, yeah, I think and they I come could, running I could see the ball from a mile away so I pick it up <laughs> take him out of the ball put him back into his cage anyway chip was really bitey and feisty I'm not much of a fan of chip and one day I woke up by the way the, the fucking cage was in my room and oh, my mum I was so scared because my house was haunted that my mum got decided to get me to hamster so I would sleep in my own bedroom so you sleep in their bed every night and then it was so loud it'd be like ah! all night long I just ended up sleeping in their bed all night anyway I woke up one morning and chip was gone and that was the last we ever saw of him I don't know what's funny about that. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, my point was, is that apparently hamsters, people kept thinking that hamsters, when they they find them and they're cold and they feel lifeless. And so then they would just, oh, and go and bury them. (gasps) They would go and bury them. Surely they, no. Yeah, they were cold and lifeless and they would go and bury them because they were so upset the hamster died. Turns out the hamster's just hibernating. Oh my God, mum, if you found Chip in my cage and he was cold yes. and you hid him and buried him because you thought he was dead, he was just hibernating. And you buried him alive? I don't think my mum would have buried him. Okay. Well, where would you put him then? She probably just placed him on some leaves. Outside? What, will you keep a dead hamster in your house? <laughs> okay, anyway, shall we begin the episode? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to... Nillywads. Newlyweds. <laughs> oh my god. Hello everyone and welcome back to Newlyweds. I'm Sophie Abu yeah. and This is my podcast. No husband. This <laughs> like is my ch- husband Jamie. Hello everyone. Uh oh, welcome. No. Yeah, a little bit of sniffle there. Welcome back uh to uh, your OG, the uh, original gangster listeners. And hey, maybe you're a new listener and you haven't listened to this podcast before. Welcome. Hey, come, take a seat, relax. Pour yourself a cup of hot cocoa. Yeah, just have a great time, you know. Um, honey, I thought I'd give you some space at the beginning of the episode to um, tell me what I've been annoying you about. What things have I been doing recently that oh, really... Oh, for God! I thought, it'd be a, I thought it would be a nice space. I've for... got a bone to pick with you. I don't... Like, have... do you have any other things to talk about I... other than the amount of bones that you have to pick with I me? just thought I would give you space to... Get it off your chest. Okay, all right. Okay, go on, just whatever you want. Okay, okay. you really want to go there? I, yeah, I'll okay. go there. Go on then. What? I am a working woman. Yes, you are, baby. And Jamie is still living in the dark ages where he thinks that women should cook and clean. Oh my God. And he gets what? cross the if he comes home to a house that isn't spotless the when I leave polish. the house at 6 a.m. and I don't get home till 7 p.m. Sophie, Sophie, I'm going to stop you right there. I know you I was... are home gaming more than me. Yeah, you have your was... Zoom calls at home. And you are like, you don't cook for me. You don't clean for me. I'm like, that... I don't have time, bitch. So, so, Sophie, that is the biggest lie. Admit that you're, admit that no, you're lying. No, I'm not. Admit... I am not lying. You are I am lying, lying through your but then, teeth. But then... You want me to work because what am I doing right now? This is called work. Honey, okay, 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 we'll go there. Guys who are listening to this, that is no truth in that. What? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, it is. Ever. Yeah, it is. We have what we have in our house. Have you ever made me a cup of coffee? I don't know how. Learn. <laughs> I don't know how. Have Can... you ever made me a cup of tea? Yes. No ways. Have you ever Sophie... made me breakfast? Yes, I made you the scrambled eggs the other day. Okay, ver- the one. Okay, what other thing in the in in my entire life of knowing you have you made me to eat I don't cook that well I don't cook that's so not... why should I cook no you shouldn't cook hey I've never I... 
<laughs> this is, I can't believe, no, hang on a second. I'm going to tell yeah, you. Yeah, guys, you had okay, it. Okay, I'm going to give what happens. So, Sophie, we have these these rules, right? Well, not rules, but we have these like little things we do. So, Sophie will make the bed in the week and I'll make the bed on the weekends. I take out the bins every Two days s- past five. Okay. I take out the bins every single time. No, That's- you don't. We have a cleaner three times a week. No, we do not. Who so does that? I take out the bins. N- never seen you do it. I uh, take them out. No, you do yeah. not. No, I do. you do not. I do. I took them out yesterday morning and you didn't even. I and- took them out. No, I took them out. I took them out. No. I took them out because one of them stank of yogurt. I took it out. Ern, who eats yogurt? Not me. Yes, what? Okay, I, wait. No, listen, hang on, hang on. You give were me meant my to put space. the bins back in give and you my, didn't. Oh my God. So I, so I do all the bins. I do all the... Not true. I do all the bills. I do all the bills. I, and now... You do all the bills because they're all in your name and I try and call them up and pay and they go, you have to have permission from James Robin Grant. Okay, the only the only thing that you do at the moment, okay, the thing is you you make the bed. Watch and, it. Yeah, watch it. Well, the only thing that you, you're meant to, you're meant to sort of make is make the bed and sometimes I've been making the bed recently. This is what... But, so, oh, oh, I wonder why because <laughs> I get up and go to the gym at 6am and Lazy Bones over here is still asleep. <laughs> okay. How am I meant to make it when you're in there? <laughs> okay, we... When Sophie comes down, this is what Sophie does. Sophie will, I, I kid you not, she'll she'll come down and she'll she'll go and open up a cupboard and look in there, trying to nothing with it. So she'll leave the cupboard open. She'll then go and make a cup of tea. She'll dip the tea bag in it, leave the tea bag on the side, just on the table, like that. No, guys, then, when I say that is an absolute categoric <laughs> lie, I've never done that in my life. It would stay. <laughs> I don't even make tea. Don't even drink tea. <laughs> Hate tea. Hate tea. It herbal even tea. annoys me. What is that, that tea bag? What is that tea bag you leave in the sink? I've left two tea bags in the sink. <laughs> Sorry, cuff me. Uh, not on the side, may I add. You're wonderful. You are truly, truly wonderful. But you are, just admit it, a little bit messy. No, I don't. Okay, I am a little bit. This is this is Sophie's routine in the morning at the moment, guys. Okay, so Sophie is, she she's killer at the moment. She'll, she'll get up at six in the morning. She goes to the gym. She works all day. You're bossing it. And I admire it massively. However... This is Sophie's morning routine at the moment, okay? That's the alarm that goes off in the morning. I'm, I wake up like there's, we're at war. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, just a normal iPhone alarm. Okay, it goes off. Sophie, then I hear this. And she takes out her retainers and then she goes, and you hear. Okay. She puts it in a cleaning machine. No, but guys, this is amazing for anyone who's had Invisalign or retainers. You had to brush them for, I found on Instagram this thing called Zimmer Dental and it t- it cleans them in a machine. So sorry, sorry I've got clean teeth and I've okay. got good hygiene. Okay. Not you, smelly bra. <laughs> okay, you do that. Anyway, she then gets up. She then, what she does every single morning is I sort of roll over and I go in one and she goes, real, <laughs> real, and does the salsa dance next to the bed. It's six in the morning. And she's doing a salsa dance. And then she goes, I'm so excited. And I go, oh, what about? And she goes, I don't know. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm excited today because we're going to watch a, a movie. We're going to watch Wonka. Yeah, therefore, because we're hosting the red carpet. we're hosting the red carpet. But like, how fun is that? We're going to the cinema in the day. So I woke up so excited this, this morning. I was like, woo, we're well, going to the cinema. Anyway, so she does that to her morning routine. Then... You know what? I, I start talking to Sophication. I'm not that annoyingly excited every day. You do the salsa thing. You do this like, with like, and you then you get closer to me, and then and then every single time you do it, every single time you pull down your pants and you go. No, I don't. Like when I'm on the Zoom and you just start. You no, your I bum. don't. You do. I don't. You do. I don't. I do that on the Zoom, and I'm still going to continue doing it because it is so funny <laughs> when Jonathan Baines is on the other line. <laughs> My stepfather. <laughs> He's really then, serious. Anyway. And then in the other then the other morning you went into the shower and then you came out and you went, I've shaved. I'm like a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, did. no, guys. That is not what happened. It's wild your life. You did. No, no, you did. I, I, no, because when you said you're as smooth as a dolphin, which is weird of you to have said, because I just shaved, yeah, everywhere. Lovely, lovely yeah. smooth legs. <laughs> Not everywhere like that. Like I shaved all my legs. Oh my god, I sound like a hairy beast. I'm not. You're fucking right. So <laughs> What's funny about that? So I'm lasered there and I'm lasered here. This is so TMI. This is not where I was going to go. We should also probably mention the fact that we still got parking tickets to pay as well. That's my last thing. You've got to pay those parking tickets. 
Before. You've got to drive, learn to drive. Well, I did. This is amazing, guys. The other day I was driving with Sophie in her car. The name, <laughs> and I can drive in it because she's a driver and I'm a learner. I don't have my license. My license has come out, which is amazing. And it's the car's in Sophie's name. And I was driving a little too fast and I got flashed. <laughs> Sophie's going to have to take the three points. <laughs> Your face is like it's about to burst. It's so rad. No, but we haven't got that through. <laughs> oh, it's coming, baby. It's... Yes, how long does that sort of stuff take? <laughs> Two weeks. Oh, about the right time. Here it comes. Oh, Three for points. For God's sake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can go on a driving course. and I've already done many of those, Jack, <laughs> as you can probably imagine. <laughs> so, oh my God, once I was doing one and Jamie walked in the back naked and the guy goes... And he was like, rah, 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 I'm just off him. He was like, excuse me, no one else is allowed to see who else is on this Zoom. It was on a Zoom. So we had to do a, a driver awareness course. Was speed that awareness course. Speed awareness course, because you got speeding for whatever the hundredth time it was. And you did this course. I Did I walk? I think I walked in the background because your camera was off, I thought. No, no. it's always on. You have to have them on. I was like, hey, everyone. And I walked naked in it. Yeah. Did everyone see me naked? Yeah. And the guy, he almost disqualified me because you're not allowed to, like part of the- Disqualified you? Yeah, part of the rule, shush, part of the rule is that you can't, no one else is in the room. Like it's very, it's very anonymous. Like the other people don't want to, you to know who they are, you know, that vibe. I don't know. I'm like, you keep me in here for quite a long time and look, I've got like an hour of attention spam. Okay, baby. All right, listen, I'll tell you what. You tell me what, what. I'll tell you what. We have a really amazing episode today. Unbelievable episode. For I'm, I'm really excited. For many reasons. Well, <clears throat> one reason is because we're about to go into our favorite part, listeners' messages, and we have some amazing things to say about that. But if you stick around for the rest of the episode, last episode, he, what the hell was that you were doing? I was trying to yawn silently. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were like doing a weird face. <laughs> and, anyway, we have a really amazing episode because last episode we talked about the fact that Sophie is very broody. Okay, let's just chill out with this because you might jinx things. I'm not going to jinx it. And we said that this episode we would bring on someone to talk about fertility, talk about babies, talk about sperm, talk about all the things that actually people don't really talk about. So later in the episode we have Helen, who is the founder of Fertility Health, who's going to come on and talk to us all about ovaries, sperm, babies, everything we need to focus on. And it's going to be amazing. So stick around for that. Okay. You know what time it is, baby? Oh, yeah, I do. What time is it, honey? It's listeners' messages. Yeah, right, is it? It's time for listeners' messages. As we always say, a huge thank you to everyone who keeps sending in our listeners' messages. It is amazing. The fact that people still listen to the episodes and still love it. We're over the moon. And last episode, we did messages of love. Mm, I love with that. Zoe oh my god amazing and do you know what we actually want to go Zoe if you haven't listened to the episode Zoe was in a wheelchair she couldn't find love and then she did and it was amazing do you know what again I feel like there's a bit of like hectorness in the world and so a, bit, yeah. a little bit of hectorness going on and I think messages of love is an amazing thing so I thought we would focus on messages of love again this episode I love that we're going to kick it off with Rhea Craven I worked at a bridal shop and also part-time waitress at a wedding venue in the town where I lived. One day, the wedding venue called the bridal shop and asked if they could borrow a dress for the day and they wanted to put on a mock wedding at the venue for an open day so couples could see how the layout would be for weddings there. They also asked if I knew anyone that wanted to be a bride for the day. Spend the day in a dress and pretend to be a bride? I was up for that, so I agreed. They advised that they would find me a groom. On the day, they took me upstairs, put on the dress, tiara, and veil. I was actually getting nervous, and it felt like a real wedding day. I was taken down the stairs with a photographer, taking photos, then walked into the room full of strangers and down the aisle to meet the most handsome man I had ever met. The minute he smiled at me, I knew he was the one. <gasps> we shakingly managed our mock vows in front of the crowd then sat at the top table and got to know each other whilst discussing how our pretend future would plan out. Fast forward 11 years, we now live happily together Please in our bounce. beautiful home with two gorgeous children, a wonderful dog, and have so far had the most eight wonderful years of marriage together. Also for bonus points, he managed to surprise me with the marriage proposal in the room where we first met at the venue no. with Will You Marry Me spelt out in candles on the floor. 
I'm sorry, my whole body's got goosebumps. I, I need I actually don't like the feeling of the goosebumps. He is that my, is unreal. He is my soulmate. Couldn't imagine my life without him. Let's spread love. I'm sorry, like that's unreal. I actually <clears throat> feel emotional with that. Oh my god. Okay, we've got another one and it's from Anonymous. My now husband and I met in school in 2004 at 15 and 16 years old. We dated on and off throughout our teens and 20s. Fast forward to 2017. I was in a very abusive relationship at the end of which I sustained some injuries which required me to go to hospital. I'm so sorry. My now husband came to the hospital to, to be with me. He brought a bag full of items to look after me, including chocolate, sweeties, water and a blanket. Since that evening, he has never left my side. We got engaged in November 2019. 19 just before the pandemic fast forward to september 2022 after 18 years in the making we got married my mum suffered a heart attack on the morning of the wedding after hearing <sighs> from her post-surgery telling me to go and get married and knowing she was okay we said our i do's after which we went to the hospital to see her wedding dress and all now just over a year on in september this year why am i about to cry we put on our wedding outfits and had a wonderful photo shoot with my mum. <sighs> Oh I emailed in as I guess the point is not every love story is a straightforward one but I married my best friend who has supported me through some really tough times in my view love conquers all that is fantastic that is amazing I love that oh my god can I read the next one no I'm going to read the next no, one no Ali you just sit back and relax Shh. okay wow these are amazing do you know I just want to tangent just quickly? Can I just say I really like this? It puts me in a really nice Do you mood. know what? Good news. Oh, good story. news doesn't really have like it, it takes a long time to like accept good news. Bad news we just see all the time. Boom, boom, news, whatever it is. And so we just think that there's loads of badness, but actually there isn't. There's greatness and goodness and love all around us. We just choose to ignore it sometimes. Yeah, we're gonna be like BBC News, but of love stories. <laughs> Ready, here we go. This mm -hmm. is from Karen Smith. <clears throat> Back in 1978, when I was 15 years old, I was watching a holiday program which featured an active holiday and immediately booked the holiday. At the same time, a boy in Yorkshire called Neil was watching the same program and did the same thing. On my first night at the activity centre, we were having supper when this whirlwind of a boy flung the door open and burst in, and a Cupid's arrow hit my heart immediately. My heart leaped out of my chest at the sight of him. We were both young and naive and spent the week hanging out together camping, rock climbing, etc. It took until the last night to finally be on our own where we sat on the upstairs windowsill and had our first kiss. We had to leave the next morning and I realised we hadn't swapped addresses. When I got home, I wrote a letter asking the course tutor for Neil's address as I wanted to return an item I had borrowed, which I hadn't. I then wrote to him and sent him a little gift. He rang me as soon as he received it. We phoned each other regularly and had long, soppy conversations, each of us dragging the phones into other rooms as far as the cables could allow so our parents couldn't eavesdrop. I thought about him a lot over the years. Later, I joined British Airways, and a friend told me he worked in Bermuda. The next time I flew to Bermuda, I thought I would look him up. I called out at the local police station, but his colleagues didn't know where he was, so I left a letter behind the desk and went off to do a shuttle to Baltimore and back. When we landed back that night, we were going through airport security, and there he was, right in front of me, waiting for me. I had the same response as I did all those years ago, and was giddy with the feeling. We spent the rest of the day and night together, and in that time we both felt it was so right and natural. When I flew back to the UK, Neil later told me that he had said to his colleague as he waved me off that I would be his wife. Oh my god. This is like overpowering emotion. Over the months, we saw a little more of each other. By December, he left Bermuda and came back to the UK to be with me, despite only having met me for a total of 10 days. We moved in together immediately and were married 10 months later. We have known each other in total for 45 years and have been married for 36 years with two fantastic grown-up children and six golden retrievers over the years. We argue and grumble as couples do, but we are still so much in love with each other as we were when we first met. We are now retired and looking forward to many more wonderful years and adventures together. From Karen. I feel choked up. <laughs> that 
that's the best group ever. That <laughs> that's amazing. unbelievable. No, what, what the, the hell? More, 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 more. Give us more, guys. Oh, my God. Jackie, Please, producer like, Jack, do we have any... This is filling my cup up so much. I feel revitalised. Do you know what we... Uh, the, this is is always a bit hectic, but these are just wonderful. They're so good, aren't they? They're there so, there's so been, much better there's than been... the poo stuff. <laughs> I think we should do something about this. I think we should do something more. Mm. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like we should just spread the love more. <gasps> I with... really want to get some of these couples on. Yeah, we should. Have we been sent loads of them? There's loads. Okay, yeah. so we don't want to do it all now. Maybe we start doing maybe little extra episodes or something where we can just flood them with love and stuff like that. But maybe we can work that out. Is there something that we can do extra, do you think? What if we sort of gave back to the people with, with their love messages? I would somewhere? love that. I would absolutely love that. I think we should do something about it. I think what we should do is a great idea. Do you remember when I su surprised you with the flash mob? Yeah. And it was amazing. I think we should do that for people who are in love. A flash mob? We should create a flash mob for the ones who are in love, for sending in these stories. So if they have a story of love, we want to create a flash mob with that person for their beloved partner and create this amazing moment of love for them. I think we should do it. Okay. So this is a great idea. So if you are someone who is in love and you want to surprise your partner with oodles and bundles and amazing bits of love, we want to create a flash mob for you. Please send us your story, send us your name, send us your details. I think it'd be really fun if people wanted to propose, we could help them oh create God. the most incredible proposal. I mean, obviously we would keep it anonymous. Oh my God, please. But they could write in who they want to propose to and we could facilitate the most incredible proposal. Oh my God. That would be... We're just, we're just celebrating love. That would be unbelievable because this podcast was made on us getting married and love. Yeah, and we'll keep it totally anonymous until it doesn't have to be anonymous because we want to talk about it. We don't have to mention your names. Anyway, if you're thinking of proposing and you want us to help you propose, send... Oh, please. Send us an email, send us a DM, send us something, anything. We want to make that happen for you in the most magical way. Slide into our DMs at Newlyweds Podcast, or you can send us an email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk and start your message with the word love. Please keep sending in all of your love stories as well. We want to hear more of them because they're just so amazing. They don't have to be stories of love. If they want to involve poo, we can do that. Sex, fertility, babies, marriage, whatever it is, we want to hear all of them. Just keep sending them in to our Instagram and our email. All of the links are in the description of this podcast as well. That would be amazing. But we really want to show, give back and produce a huge, amazing moment of love in a flash mob for someone. That would be amazing. Oh my God, I absolutely love that. Okay, there's too much love in the air. We've got to get on with the episode. But that was awesome. Keep writing us all these stories. We love you guys. That's the end of... Listeners Messages. Okay, I'm really excited for this, Soph. But I'm very excited. I'm a little nervous at the same time. I'm very nervous. You don't have to copy what I'm saying. I can't help it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we have Helen, um, who, as I said before, is the founder of Hertility Health, which is an amazing company that looks um, into how your body is dealing with... It looks at like your female hormones, your female reproductive production, productive system. When, we, I, we, do you know what we're incredible we just we, I tell you what we don't know much we, we need some educating we need some educating Helen's going to come on because as I said before you know when you get married at some point Sophie and I probably do want to go down the road of having babies and so why not to prepare yourself for that journey rather than just suddenly jumping into it and I think it's a really good lesson for everyone so Helen is about to come on the podcast I'm a little nervous I hope I don't overshare I really hope you don't overshare just let let the specialist do her thing. You All know right. what I mean? Please welcome to the podcast, Helen. Thanks for having me. Thank Helen. you so much for being here. Um, so do you know what? So we we've been speaking recently about um fertility and eggs. And honestly, it's been the the feedback that we got from the episode was just insane because actually it's one of these things that no one really talks about that much. And I got told this thing, it's like you know, Sophie and I are married now, but people are told the entire time, we said in the last episode, to not get pregnant, not get pregnant, not get pregnant, you know, all those kind of things, wear protection, then suddenly it's get pregnant. There's no in between. Nothing. It's hectic. Yeah, I know. So you're here to coach us through that. <laughs> bit. I will not join you in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not there? Yeah. You're not there when it happens. You the voice in your head. <laughs> oh, I thought you were there when it happens and you tell us what to do, right? You know what to do. I don't think I do. Okay. <laughs> um, but also, let's give a bit of background to yeah. Helen and you, because I've spoken about George's 
situation. She's really open about it. You probably know more than I, I do because I was <laughs> saying, as I was saying, I was like, I'm getting this all wrong. And I mean, you just, you literally are the saviour in our family for that reason. <laughs> so I don't know whether you could talk up a little bit about that and also your the whole business. Yeah, so Helen, so what, what do you do? So I am a molecular geneticist. Mm -hmm. So I lecture masters in medical students in UCL in reproductive science and women's health and prenatal genetics and fetal medicine. Mm -hmm. um, lots of things to do with our health and how we make babies and how our bodies make babies. Um, but I started my company, Hertility, a few years ago because I was really frustrated that as a scientist with so many years of education and research behind reproduction and women's health, I actually had no answers about my own body. Mm. And that's a very strange position to be in mm. when you're lecturing people about the statistics and thinking, I'm actually ignoring these statistics for myself because I'm thinking that I'm probably fine. And so I started Artility to give women the opportunity to investigate their menstrual cycles, to understand their symptoms, to understand their fertility, and to just really be an expert in their own body. And that is something that we should all be. You know, we have information at our fingertips on our phone, and we can look up the answer to everything. And yet one of the most profound questions there is, is can I have a baby? And we have no way to answer that. Can you so can you give me some statistics then? What are the statistics? You, you're going to scare me, aren't they're you? Ble they're bleak. Oh no! They're, yeah, they're bleak. sad. Are they really? Yeah, they're they're sad. Okay, well, give them to me. So the World Health Organization has just um, announced that it went from one in seven to now one in six couples are infertile, so cannot uh, get pregnant, um, and one in three women will have a gynecological condition at some point in their lives. So when we think about screening programs, you know, we, we do cervical screening for yeah. cervical cancer, but your chance of cervical cancer is one in 164. Your chance of a hormone imbalance is, you know, nearly 63% uh, looking at our database. So we should all be screening our hormones. We should all be just screening our overall health to know where we're at. Um, each person's health is very unique to them. So sometimes, sometimes, very often actually, statistics really don't do us any favors because you're either in the camp, camp who says, um, it's it's going to be me, or you're in the camp that says, not me, even no matter how, mm -hmm. how high the odds. That is fascinating. I didn't know it was that high. One in six people are infertile. Yeah. Couples are infertile. Yeah. Oh my, and how quickly do you, uh, do you have good eggs and bad eggs? This is what oh, I Oh, no, thought. I'm now freaking out. Yeah, like, what, this is scary. Oh, I, what do I need to do? I'm like, like, bring your bad news. Oh, my God, you're like the, well, the no, Grim Reaper in I, here. I, I, <laughs> that great? I've been called many things, but not that. Um, the, uh, in terms of good eggs and bad eggs, um, we, we're all very unique. Mm. there's a lot of different reasons why people struggle to conceive. Um, a lot of it is down to a lack of education, simply about how to get pregnant. Um, as you said, we spend our whole lives being told, do not get pregnant. Mm. And assuming that if we even look at a phallic object, we could get pregnant. And that narrative really is among both boys and girls. And it really shouldn't be the way. We should be saying, here is how you get pregnant. Here is the short window in which you can get pregnant every single month. Everything outside of that, you can't. So, game on. Okay, I'm. I'm. I feel like I'm learning to ride a bike for the first time. <laughs> no, oh it's my wild. God. Yeah, Why are wait. we not taught this? At I school? don't know. I'm literally. What, what, what window are you? What, what is this little window? It's a. It's a very important window. What, what happens it's, in that window? It's, it's when you ovulate. So. Oh my god! Um, I don't even know what that means. Okay, we're gonna go back to <laughs> oh, basics. Okay, start again. Yeah. Start again. We need, we need to go. <laughs> Everyone is just banging their heads on the. Mix. Sorry, I don't know what ovulating means. Okay, is that when you're. Oh God, I don't know what to say. You don't ovulate. I know I don't ovulate. Okay, no. good. But that's when you're, that. I think ovulating is when your eggs are reproducing. What does that even mean? I don't even know. <laughs> Guys, this is really bad. I don't know what ovulation is. You don't know ovulation. No, Helen, please. Is it, when, you're, you guys? Your, is it okay. when your womb is doing something? Is, it, is no, it when your eggs come out? Okay, when you okay have wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. I think I need, to I need to break out a uterus here. Okay. okay. I have brought this okay. Okay. as a visual display. At Artility, we went back to the textbooks and we said, if most people can name all of the Kardashians, I don't even know how many there are, so I'm the opposite, mm -hmm. um, and yet they can't label parts of their body, we need to normalise anatomy. Helen, Does Helen. anyone know what this is? Helen, listen. That's you, the vulva. No, hang on a second. You're, you're, <laughs> listen, you are looking at a professional. 
Uh, point at something and I'll tell you exactly what it is. I am pointing to this round object here that's attached to this to here. Your, so, okay. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the vagina. That is the vagina. I don't want to walk through any vagina. <laughs> You're not supposed to go out of a vagina once in your life. I don't want to go... Okay. okay. So, okay. I'm going to start. So on the far left-hand side or right-hand side, you have two little things that sort of come around and they're clutching onto the eggs. No. No. Okay. So, so okay. They go so, around the outside. They so go, don't come to me. Don't come to you. Come on, Soph. You've got one. Okay. Big... I think that's the, this bit is the what bit? The, what bit the you... walls, the lining. This bit here, yeah. That's the that's, vulva. That's the vulva. No, it's not, guys. <laughs> that's Jesus. the cervix at the bottom. This is the that's cervix. The, that's yes. the, oh this my is the cervix. God, yeah. I thought that was the clitoris. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> We're gonna have to get one out here, guys. Okay, so you've both said vulva so many times that I, I mean, I usually love saying vulva <laughs> just to make people feel uncomfortable, but. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, where is it? Okay, okay. So, okay, we. So, for anyone who is listening, <laughs> there is a diagram of a vagina that Helen it's is holding. It's not a vagina. Okay, it's not what a is vagina. it? What is it? It's, it's the female reproductive anatomy. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, these must be the. This is the womb inside. This is the womb. Boom! Yes. Two out of. Sorry, you're a lady. <laughs> you're a female. You know. Okay, that is the womb. And that is the cervix. That's the lining, the inner walls. This is the inner, yeah. This God. is the lining. But, but what are these guys? So the two things on the either side of the womb. Oh my God. You're the you. ovaries. Ovaries! Ovaries, of yes. course. It was on the tip of my tongue. That's, I said <laughs> it wasn't on your tip of your tongue. I said eggs. I ovaries. said eggs. Yeah, the ovaries contain the eggs. Well, hard But I'm right. just going to, I had to be a little okay, bit of Okay, that's very true. But that, understanding this system yes. is, is key to how we create life. And Why it's one of the it? most... Why? Because life begins in here yeah. for every one of us. Life begins within the womb. And every single month, our ovaries produce a single egg that is released, travels along the fallopian tube, waits here for the sperm to show up. And if the sperm doesn't show up, the lining of your womb, which is built up every single month being like, please, it's going to be this month, then goes, no baby, no sperm, I'm going to shed. And that's when you have your period. So you, you bleed. That is fascinating. So your body every single month is so optimistic in thinking it's going to be this month. We we anticipate from a, a reproductive and biological standpoint that we are going to get pregnant every single month, mm -hmm. which is very unrealistic. That would be it's ready. Awesome. I mean, evolution does need to keep up with that. Yeah. But because we because we now silence all of these intrinsic and natural notifications that our body gives us, mm -hmm. we are really none the wiser as to this process. And, and when it happens every single month, when you ovulate, your estrogen is at its peak. Your estrogen affects almost everything about you. You're more confident. You have clarity of thought. You, it even is linked with collagen in your skin. So you look more beautiful. Mother nature wants you to procreate. So she will do her best. She'll make you funnier, better looking, more erudite. Just all round, just all a 10 round, out of 10. So all that's why the menopause hit. <clears throat> yeah. It's a tough game. Wait, wait hang on. We'll explain that. What do you mean when men menopause hits? When menopause hits, which is, is what is we don't pr reproduce when your eggs. eggs when your ovaries run out of eggs. So you've got basically no estrogen left. Wow. So, so your you're body, not having a glow up almost. The, it, the, the, it's more than a glow up. It actually is linked with estrogen. We tend to think of estrogen. Like what? Is, what, what do you think of when I say estrogen? The stuff that Soy comes out. The stuff that comes what? out your boobs. <laughs> oh my Oh my god! Well, I oh thought, man, this is I, worse than I thought. I thought, <laughs> I thought like, okay, I just, estrogen. I think the female hormone, testosterone, estrogen. And that's yes. what oh my, I think. What is wrong with it? I'm going to sound so. I did you just say soya milk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's, it's in soy milk, right? Yeah. I have. I can. If I squeeze my nipples hard enough, they no, can. No, no. They can lactate, and no. I thought that was estrogen. No, that that would be prolactin, if anything. But um, why does that happen, Tim? I I I'd maybe stop squeezing your. <laughs> Nipples. Um, prolactin's it's, a really prolactin's a hormone that literally pro lacto like making milk. It's a hormone that make, produces helps us produce milk. But even if you touch your boobs, your prolactin rises. It's an interesting fact. But Our what, bodies are very receptive to men. external. <laughs> stop squeezing your nipples. Stop squeezing your nipples. <laughs> yeah, basically, stop trying to milk that. Okay, so so let's take a step. Let's take, okay. Ooh, this is this is this is far more insanely complicated and interesting than I ever thought it was going to be. So we, so okay. So if we take a step back, so. Menopause is when your womb stops producing eggs. Your ovaries your stop producing ovaries eggs. Your ovaries stop yeah. producing eggs. Yeah. 
And so we're born with all the eggs we'll ever have. Yeah. We're born with like 2 million eggs. And as we get older, that drastically diminishes over time. So, so that's why people are like, you know, your good eggs are when you're younger. Yeah. That's but it's just be because right. more you have you just have more. have more of them. It's it's two factors: the amount and the quality of eggs. So the amount of eggs you have when you're younger obviously is more, and the quality is better. We you know we love to isolate different events and different body parts. You know when you go drinking, you're like oh my liver, but actually it affects your stability, it affects your balance, it affects your um, brain, it, mm. it affects almost your all of your your ovaries. It affects all of your Organs, so you know, living lives that are full of um, fun things can actually really impact your overall health. And when, given that we are, we're you're different. We'll come to you in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, I we're knew born I was with. Oh, yeah. I just, I thought I was born. <laughs> I just like I'm different. Yeah, your ovaries are all <laughs> over the place. Um, <laughs> the we are, you know, we we carry these precious eggs with us our whole lives. And so, mm. whatever things we've been up to, we also expose our eggs to, um, which is something I think more people should know from an earlier age. What that. I'm sorry, I would have conducted myself, not that I've done loads of crazy <laughs> things, but if I had known that... Mother hen, sit on your eggs. I just yeah. wouldn't, like, that's why are we not taught that at school? I think we can all agree, I mean, and the huge majority of people, that we have done things which we abuse our bodies, whether it's alcohol or maybe having a cigarette or, I don't know, I'm sure playing rugby for me can probably not be the best, you know... Cycling I did, is actually very bad. Cycling, cycling, you know, so is, all yeah, these really, things... It blocks off the blood supply to your... Yeah, wearing... Well, only for men. It's, only just, for it's the saddle. It really blocks off the blood supply to their... It's, male cyclists are more prone to erectile dysfunction. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no, you were a cycle bunny. Producer Jack is freaking out. Okay, get rid of that bike now. Um, <laughs> so I imagine that if someone is going through this journey and they're, they are suddenly going to go and get their eggs checked or they're going to get their sperm checked or whatever it is, you can potentially reverse it and make it better. Is that right? No, don't tell me it's not right. Um, you can no, you can't increase the number of eggs you have. You can't. You can you can help with the quality, but through the most basic means, which is just understanding your lifestyle choices. Um, so much of oh. our even with people who don't ovulate regularly, you can very often resume ovulation just through healthier lifestyle and and exercise. So. Food is okay. the best medication for almost everything. Oh, so, great. So That's give us the food. food. <laughs> the one thing I'm really scared of, I saw on your Instagram, vaping. And I just feel like people need to know this because the whole Gen Z yeah. world is walking around with a vape. Yeah. And I've done it. Apparently, I know. It's, I don't anymore. It's, you don't it's anymore. detrimental to egg production. Oh, what? Well, it's, it's, we don't know. Nobody's ever yeah, done the studies. Yeah, because you couldn't the studies. A long time ago, I did a study looking at um, the effect of e-cigarettes on sperm. And it really does have an impact on sperm. The food that we eat is very important for essentially almost every process. That sounds very obvious. And we sometimes give such throwaway generic pieces of advice to people, which is stop smoking, stop drinking, eat healthily. What we eat produces byproducts, right? Mm -hmm. We digest, but also the food we eat also has byproducts. Mm -hmm. So think about sourdough. Have you ever made sourdough? Not made it. No, me. I've eaten it. No, no, I've eaten a lot of sourdough. I need to. I need to. I need to actually learn to make this. So I, I don't know how to make. I wouldn't. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't know how to make think, sourdough. Think about no sourdough or uh, kombucha or okay. even fermenting beer. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You start with a ferment. It's it's literally a fermentation process. Got so, it. if you were to feed your sourdough culture with, you know, just random sweets or chocolate, I mean, you're not going to expect that to thrive. It needs to be fed certain things in Got order for it. that culture, which is a live bacteria, it, to, to thrive. So it's your garden. You need to... It's you need, our garden. It's our garden. We need to water I'm it in really the right way. I'm really good at this. I'm very you into are. my gut microbiota. I eat sauerkraut. I eat kimchi. Great. Fermented food. So, this is amazing for your estrogen. Okay. <clears throat> the reason why crazy. we wanted to speak to you as well is because Sophie, and, Sophie is feeling incredibly broody. Okay. You are. You've said it. You said you are feeling broody. No, we just, in general, obviously our aim in life is to start a family. We're not trying for kids at the moment. Um, no actually... shit, you have no idea how to do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I thought the clitoris was on the Yeah, womb. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, wonder, no wonder he can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, you're saying more than you need. You know, but we are, but you know, and, and I think, you know, I, and... Sophie has a sister she's spoken about who yep. has gone down the road of IVF. 
Um, I have friends. And one of my, you know, great friends of mine said when they were first trying for their first kid, they were having a really tough time. And they said, I just wish we had checked ourselves yeah, earlier, earlier because then we wouldn't be in the situation now which is a little bit more upsetting than it would have been before not knowing this and yeah. that and not understanding it and then having to go through this whole journey while trying to navigate everything else yeah. and so we thought what a great way to do is chat to you about okay what can we do to check these things now before we go into and go right we're going to go and try and have a baby now thank you that there is what i want everybody to do it's the whole reason we're I've pioneers dedicated the last... we are pioneers yes it, this is this is what everyone should do when you look cold faced at the statistics, you should say, you know, I'm going to actually check myself before I wreck myself in a few years' time. We have this thought that we're all going to be fine and that you can have babies, you know, into your 40s. And we see this constantly in the press and images of famous people having babies in their 50s. And it's very misleading. It's like false advertising for women and men because they think, I'm probably fine. I mean, I'm, mm. I'm only in my early 30s. Mm. But when you think from, from an evolutionary standpoint, 30 is quite old. Women used to have babies in their early teenage years for right or wrong. And nobody's saying that was the good thing to do. But from an evolutionary standpoint, leaving it until you're 30 is actually quite late. It's just that our really? mindset as a generation is completely shifted. And it's actually shifted very quickly in a, in a relatively short amount of time. So yes. really only in the last 20 years has it become the norm to get married much later and to have babies, therefore, much later. When women, as they get older, it's harder for them to reproduce, yeah. right? And that's why there's a sort of generalization where it's like, oh, you either have, women have a ticking clock and that's this kind of upsetting thing that people always say, oh my God, I got this ticking clock. And for men, it feels like there isn't the same narrative. Is that <clears throat> true or false? It is false. <gasps> It's false. <laughs> yes, you can have babies till you're 70. Uh, but, so it's 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 not true to Al the Pacino same extent. Al Pacino is killing yes, it. Yes, I know. He's, he's another false advertiser. So, um, yeah, you can still produce sperm and get somebody pregnant, but the quality of that sperm has gone down. So the mutational load, I shouldn't say the word load when I'm talking about this, but the, <laughs> your mutational load doubles every 16 years. So what, what it that? means that you accrue mutations as you get older. So I'm, so I'm you firing pass on, these blanks. Yeah, you will pass on some pretty pretty hectic mutations. Oh my God. Yeah. That is what? not glamorous sorry, at all. No. <laughs> I, it's actually, sorry, it is wild that we don't know this. Yeah. And, and am I an anomaly? No, like, I, 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 spend... I did not know this. I, this is my naive, immature, stupid brain thought, okay, I understand how it, it affects women. And I thought men can keep having babies until they're 80 and the sperm is exactly the same. So and, did I. And I had this, you know... It's, Who are you planning on having babies with in your 80s? It's listen, not going to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I just thought that. You're, you're, you're going to trade you in yeah, for a new Yeah, you would have traded me in. There's going to be loads of your kids running around. Jesus, yeah. no. Trade, you wanted your army of Jamie's. Traded you in. No, but I, I didn't... That is so interesting... To no, I did not realize that. I think if we go back to the screening, yeah. the reason everyone should do it, as you say, everyone should check themselves. Um, and it's not a wild thing to think that we should all check in on our hormones and our reproductive health. Again, a lot of people come to me and they say, don't want babies, don't want to know. And your reproductive system impacts you irrespective of your desire to have children. Um, when we experience hormone imbalance, we are tired, we can't lose weight, we are cranky, we feel cold, we are... Most of us will blame ourselves when we feel these symptoms. And very often there's a true reason for it, which is that your hormones are out of balance. So about 63% of people who do a test with fertility have at least one hormone out of range. And there's, there's something you can do for that. And it can significantly impact your day-to-day -day life, how you feel, how you present yourself. Oh, I'm excited. Whether it's your skin, your mood, your weight, sleep, metabolism, appetite, sex drive... All of those are controlled by your hormones. But if you ask people, how are your hormones? They'll say, I have no idea. Can I, can I just ask, because I think also what we, what we want to do here is because we step on this ground where perhaps someone is, you know, um, blaming themselves mm -hmm. a lot of the time. And I think that's what happens. Where, where I think, I, you know, because I've got friends who um, have spoken to me and said, oh, they, they blame themselves that they can't, you know, reproduce or have a baby. And it's very upsetting. And it's, I want to say, it's not anyone's fault, is it? It's no, just, it's, um, it's just... I mean, I think that's one of the primary reasons people don't 
get help sooner is that they assume that they're doing something wrong. And I think that moving away from that and immediately checking whether there is something physiologically mm. or her- hormonally wrong is so, it's actually quite liberating. What is the best sex position to <laughs> reproduce? Um... I'm really sorry you don't have to answer that. Okay, get up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was moving. I was, I, I was moving. I was moving. He's like, yeah, yeah. So, I don't like I was just, yeah. Is there one? Or is it just straightforward missionary and that's totally relaxed as well? So, again, it brings you back to the study. How many people have done a study where they've said, okay, out of 100,000 people, what way did you do it? Oh and did you get pregnant? <laughs> We just, we, I mean, we've got no data on this. We, we, maybe we need to do this. This is the study we need to do. Legs up, turn around. Yeah, no, we don't have the data, sorry. Okay, fine, we have no data. Just so that the big sort of heavy hitters in terms of drugs, alcohol, smoking, vaping, those are probably the areas you want to avoid when you're trying to have 100%. a baby. We've got this unique window, guys. Three months minimum before you have a baby for you to be your purest self. So that idea of let's before go before you a... try or before, before you try. Fine. Think of think of. So you, you getting, walk... we can stop all drinking and stuff and then try yeah, three months do, clean. Yeah. yeah, go clean for three months and then maybe try. So that idea of let's go and have a couple of drinks, get a bit frisky, yeah, and exactly. then go and have sex and have our baby. Uh, I mean, I'm ruining everything for you. Yeah, I that that <laughs> honestly. I know. Okay, so it's literally like... Okay, okay I like this. So you like this? This is just simple You like this because it's, it's scheduled. Okay. It's, it's a it's schedule. Yeah. It's like, we're going to have sex this. on a Tuesday. Then we're going to have sex on a Saturday. Well, and you will only be, be just... having sex when? When you ovulate. Oh, Which ovulate. is how many yes. times? Ta- like how many? You'll ovulate once every month. What the day? You ovulate. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you'll The egg is released. It will <laughs> wait. And it... So there's around... Three days of every month that you can actually get pregnant. The rest, you cannot. I reckon my sperm is aggressive. You're joking. No, I'm not. One day a month you get pregnant. Three days. Three, about three days. three days a month. The sperm can live for about three days up there, so. Okay, we, how do we do this test? So, so, so <laughs> that is we, This is really important. So if Sophie was going to do the test, does she do it and then we get the reports later, right? We send you a blood test. You do it at home. Mm-hmm. It's just a... A prick. It's just a prick. Mm, she lives <laughs> you have to well. get used to those, yeah. Um, and then you send it off to our labs and within eight days we'll give you the results. When it comes to the dudes. Yes, let's okay. talk about the dudes. Okay. What do I need to go and... Um, what do I need to do? I just wanted to, you to finish was, your sentence I was there. I didn't say, know I need to go to a room with a pot and uh, then and well, what do I need to do? Okay, so... Um, we're also going to arrange this for you because we, we, we're, we're, we're going to open up this. Uh, we say it's in the pipeline. This is, it's coming soon. These are all our jokes about our male pathway. <laughs> but we're going to sort this for you. Um, essentially, where I said we're, all, we're born with all the eggs we have, so yeah. they're steadily declining over time. Men have a three-month life cycle where you create new sperm. So that's like a why snake that shedding its skin. Exactly. God, no, don't use that. <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> So within that three months, yeah. you can significantly improve your sperm count, motility, progressive motility, um, concentration, all of these parameters that are important to sperm. And the reason I say those parameters is because when you look at sperm down a microscope, it's literally like looking at a subsection of society. There's some that are going, swinging, swinging across the screen, going, going straight for the target. There's others that are just twitching. There are others that are swimming in circles. Some sperm have two tails. Some sperm have two heads. It's wild. I think mine are going to be hectic. Some sperm. I think honestly, mine are going to be hectic. We don't want two heads. Mine are going to be really hectic. Yeah, well, really hectic. We'll we'll, we'll let you know. (laughs) That just. I'll tell the story later. No, I just. No, I can't say. (laughs) Oh gosh. (laughs) All right, I'll tell this. Fine. Do you remember that (laughs) during lockdown? Ah! No, I don't think you should. I don't know what you're about to say. But it's not that bad. But do, do, during lockdown, um, I had a very Sophie and I. Uh, we had sex, and I had a very scary moment because I looked at my semen, and it was a rusty color. <laughs> do you remember this? No, I and don't. And I got so upset about it because I was really scared. I didn't know what to. do. I was freaking out, and I took a photo of it and sent it to my mum. <laughs> 
No, I'm really sorry. I, I really am sorry. You've never told me this. And I was not involved in this. <laughs> and, no, we were quite... We, like, <laughs> no. you did, <laughs> That's mom, so weird. I'm not happy about that at all. I'm she's just, like a doctor. She said, well, I need to see a photo. I need to see a photo of what it looked like. Oh, my God. I really no, overshared I mean, that. I, I really overshared that. that. You really yeah. overshared that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Helen, Um. so what do I need to do? Okay. <laughs> So sperm health is very receptive to better lifestyle changes. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty pretty easy actually Great. for you within three months. This is why this is why it really annoys me when couples are trying to conceive the woman is being holier than thou, changing everything about her life, and her partner is just out with the lads yeah. doing whatever they yeah. want. And even though the egg is the largest cell in the body. And even though the sperm is the smallest cell in the body, just saying, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it still carries 50% of the DNA. So it's, it's a teamwork. It's a, it's a party guy that has a very important mission, but that 50% of the DNA is very much impacted by your lifestyle. Okay. So yeah. it's a teamwork thing. The it's whole, a te- it's a and teamwork. if you are doing it, be a team together. So no more wing stop for you. And, oh, what? What? No more wings of yeast. Wings of is a chicken place that I quite like. It's delicious. Fast food. Yeah, it's really yummy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. This this is so we're gonna do this test with Soph. Yes. Which is gonna be amazing. Yeah. And then we're also gonna do it with me. Yes. And we're gonna get you a um. We're gonna get you a sperm test. And I think and what I really just think firstly I just think there's this whole thing you know when I was saying that story about sex right we still have this sort of taboo around sex we don't like talking about it and we don't like mentioning the fact about our ovaries or our sperm or we d- we sort of hide away from it because it's sort of the subject oh we can't talk about it but actually having these conversations are so important so important so, so important I, 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 think. I think we should just normalize it from it's, totally it's us that makes things weird mm-hmm. about sex right so we so should so just normalize conversations so sending a picture to my mum is is fine T- totally fine there you go see it's totally fine. be normalized there you go <laughs> there you go um helen this is incredible if someone wants to find hertility where can we find it uh we are hertilityhealth.com mm-hmm. or hertility health on instagram when do i do my Thing. We'll get yours delivered to you this week. Great. But if you want, uh, but you should abstain from Oh, that's going to be tricky with us. We're, we're acting or... like rabbits. <laughs> God, God, no, we're not. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she's just had her period. Oh. I know. Yeah, and do you know break. what? And do you know what? I, I, I am so cheesy, but I just love her so much. <laughs> and, and she gets just a bit grossed out at me because honestly, I'm no, no, no. It's a, TMI again. This is a cycle problem that testosterone drives. A I, lot. Yeah. I think I'm overloaded with testosterone. Yeah. It's like once a month and it's overwhelming the stench of truffles on I him. am convinced that male hormones react from a pheromonal sense to female hormones and that probably that once a month is when you ovulate. I knew it. I, can, I sense it. It's I like sense you're, it. What? You're giving the vibes like She me gives pregnant. me the vibes sometimes. It's like the, dog, like the little girl dogs when they're like mooshing. She gives me the vibes sometimes. And I can tell she's giving me the vibe. I, I don't, is, I'm not sure I believe that. I'm I pretty promise sure. you. I sometimes look at my partner and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? And he's like, you're you're looking at me like that. And I'm like, I just took milk from the fridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. But sometimes she does that. <laughs> but she's she took in it the out kitchen. in a sexy way. Yeah, she's in the kitchen and she sort of does this sort of, ooh, a little, I'm like, oh, I know what. No, if yeah, I like, the truffle. Yeah. If I take my pajama trousers off because I'm hot in bed, he's like, oh, really? I'm like, let's go. No, let's go. I love that. When we get the tests, yeah. I don't know if Sophie will want to share. I will be happy to share Great. my results. So we'd like to get you back on. And we Great. Can, and I want to talk about it as we reveal it on the podcast from Great. my side. I feel really good about doing that. Not only am I really excited and nervous and also so interested, I feel like I can't believe I've gone this far in my life not knowing those sort of things yeah. and to be able to help educate other people. Mm. I just feel like we're doing a good thing. Hertility Health is doing an amazing thing. Yeah. I found that very, very, very interesting. I can't believe you didn't know what the womb was. I can't believe you didn't know where the clitoris was. <sighs> it's not what you normally say. That was uh, gross. That was gross. I even uh, grossed out of that. <laughs> I even grossed out of that. Shake it off. Okay, shake it off. What do you Shake mean? it off. Like, I'm going to have to shake that common off because it will stay with me shake all day long. It, off. it will ick me out the entire day long. <laughs> all right, everybody. Listen, uh, thank you so much for listening to our podcast once again. If you haven't shared it with other people, 
please do go and share, share it with as many people as you can because we just want to spread the word of love, of laughter, of entertainment, of happiness, of fertility, whatever it is, we want to just share it with the world. So please share it to as many people as you possibly can. We'd absolutely love that. If you want to get in touch as well, you can. We want to hear your stories. We want you to send in your stories of love. We also want to organize a proposal for you or even a flash mob to show how much you love your partner. Please, please send us some messages newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk that's our email or at newlyweds podcast on instagram again all the links in description we'd absolutely love to hear from you wouldn't we so oh boy would we also peeps we're going on tour yeah we bloody are we're on yeah peeps yeah peeps you can still get tickets glasgow manchester Dublin. Dublin. London. Bristol. No, Birmingham. Oh. <laughs> Birmingham. We're not going to Bristol. We're not going to Bristol. No, we're not going to Bristol. Um, but Birmingham. London. Woo. Yeah. Again, another one. Belfast. No, we're not going there. Oh. No. Oh, Dublin. I really got this wrong. I need to Dublin. Somewhere. Dublin. Manchester. Birmingham. Dublin. And Glasgow. And Glasgow. Boom. Go and get your tickets. Link in the description as well. We want to see you there. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit different. Maybe we took a little more serious route. But if you liked it, we want to hear from you. So go onto our YouTube and in the comments on our YouTube, which is Newlyweds Podcast, you can watch all the episodes there. Um, go and comment and say if you like the episode, what you liked about it. We would love to hear from all of you. Your feedback, we absolutely love. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do because it makes the world of difference. Okay. If you're getting engaged. Go do it. If you're getting married. Hey! Uh, if you're single. Yeah. If you just broke up. Oh, it's okay. If you're getting a divorce. You got this girl and boy. Okay. And if you are just living life and dating. Fuck yeah. Oh my God, that was it. And if you're married. Fuck yeah. And there we no, go. I need All to right. start. Okay, really everybody. Aggressive. We'll see you next Monday for another episode. Until then, have a great week. Bye. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye.